Ready? Right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy 90th birthday, dear Papa. Happy birthday to you. So let's see, where do we start? Yeah. Let's talk about this birthday. Which birthday is it for you? How many years? 90 years ago. November 11th, 1928. I was born in Manhattan, Little Italy, they called it, the area. It was near the Chinese section. So they, they came here to the United States at the same time, about the same time, or similar. They came from Italy. People came from Italy. So this is the way we got to know each other and stuff like that. But I was born there, and I would say a couple of months later, they moved to Brooklyn. You know, it wasn't too nice there because they had these big buildings. It was crowded. But that's where my other relatives who came first moved to that area. Little Italy, they called it. And they had restaurant, Italian restaurants and stuff like that. And it was nice. I guess my father had a chance to get a job when they came there. But he was pretty well known. And he, he knew shoemaking. He was a shoemaker. He worked on uh, fountain pens, the new fountain pens that came out. You know, where you write with the ink in them? Yeah. Yeah. And he had, he, so he went from job to job. Yeah. But he was very good. He's the one that got me interested in clocks. That's why I have about eight clocks in the house. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So what happened, of course, uh, toys were expensive and stuff like that. I was the only son. And uh, I learned mechanical equipment from the clocks. I used to take them apart. What he did was he got like a a colorful design on a piece of cardboard. And he used to make a little hole in there, and he used to say, okay, push the button on the clock. Yeah. I don't know where he got them from, but there was something that people didn't need anymore. They weren't bad clocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it got me so interested. I was only, I would say about a couple of years old, that's all. Wow. Yeah, and he got me interested in mechanical equipment, you know? The clock. Yeah. And I really got so interested in <laughs> I wouldn't dare, Renata wouldn't dare get rid of any of my clocks. That's it. It's the most important thing in my life. But I, being of that age, it was to me, it meant, it meant to be a toy, mm -hmm. but an intelligent toy. Yeah. See? And from then on, I went to an aviation high school, you know? and uh, graduated with a good marks. Half of the day was about airplanes. Mm -hmm. And this was just before the war, the Second World War. And uh, we used to stand by the windows there, and we learned how to fly. They taught us half a day, this was high school, and the other half was arithmetic, mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, other things that are, you know, normal language and stuff like that. And I, I got very interested in that too, but it was that half I sort of pushed aside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And uh, but the mechanical part where you delved into flying, how a plane works, this, its shape, size, how it. It's almost like an air, uh, a, a bird, yeah. and and how they developed the airplane in yeah. that time, because they were still they were still young, 
but they were starting to develop for wars that were coming, mm -hmm. you know. And other countries were d developing planes too, you know, and they got very popular. I tried to join the uh, Canadian Air Force. I did. They said to me, you're too young for that because I had gotten out of high school, graduated. I wanted to fly like crazy. And, uh, but they turned me down. So I went to Canadian, uh, wrote a letter to the Canadian Air Force. Mm. And they had some beautiful planes too. Yeah. And I used to write letters to all these aircraft companies, all the American aircraft companies, and please send me pictures of your uh, plane, you know, mm -hmm. your fighter plane, your bombing plane, you know, and stuff like that. And, uh, but it started to wear off after a while, you know. Uh, uh, after all, the girls, uh, women's, uh, women's jobs were hard to get, and like I said, there was a half a dozen sisters. They were young, yeah. not you, not all younger than me. Some were a little older. They got some jobs. I felt sorry for my mother because she used to work, wash clothes. Mm -hmm. The girls always gave her a hard time about cleaning the house and this and that, you know. And, and I used to just hear it, you know, yeah. and all that. And uh, I said to myself, I got to learn how a washing machine works. So I started, when she had trouble, I fixed the machine, wow. the washing machine. It was an electric, electrical machine. She used to throw the clothes, it got easier. But she had a, a very thick saw right here because she used to be on a washboard. And she had all this family, you know. Yeah. And having a hard time with the girls. I mean, this is the way it looked to me. Anytime they had a particular job, she used to say, you do this, you do that, and you do this. So between the six, Two of them were younger than me. There was Mary, and uh, the oldest is Irene, and then Rose, then Lucy, and then the youngest was Terry. She ended up in uh, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. There. Now she still lives there. And so we were talking about the post office before. When did you start working there? I st as soon as I came out of the army. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there was an opening. Wow. Well, I was called upon while I was in the army, and my father told them. He's, he's in the army now, and he's in there for two years, he's going to be in. This is the Korean War. And uh, he was very worried, shaken, he got sick, and all that stuff. He was, I was the only son, you know what I mean? And uh, me, like a dope, I, I was getting so involved with the army that I, I couldn't think of writing letters. So I didn't communicate too often, you know, which is the wrong thing to do. Yeah. But I got involved with another life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Meeting a German girl. One of the GIs, he needed the shoelaces. shoelaces yeah. yeah, so the three of us were walking through the streets of Heidelberg, yeah. We said, let's go into the shoe store and get these shoelaces that he yeah. needs. So we walked in there and uh, I noticed I had attention from a young, young girl, a couple of years, a few years younger than me. I said, but uh, I got interested. She seemed to be interested in me. And I said to her, what time do you get off? So she told me, oh, about five o'clock, six o'clock, something like that. They worked till they, it got dark. And uh, I said, I'll be outside the store on my own. We'll, yeah. we'll go to eat. You know? Yeah. And that was it, of course. So we went out, we went out together, and we did that. I was in the States with my training. We had a train because in an emergency, we would have been thrown right into the war. Yeah. To help. Right. But in this case, they did get, hit, uh, I would say maybe three quarters went to the, to, to, toward the war. Yeah. Korea. Okay. And uh, one quarter went to, Germany as an occupation troop. 
and uh, of course we had our own jobs there, mm -hmm. but we were all well, just trained the same way. We started going out together, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, whenever I had partial partial day off, yeah. I went there and I met her parents and we got used to each other and, and uh, when I was ready to leave, the ship was supposed to be brought to the northern part of Germany, mm -hmm. a big uh, battleship, and we all got on there, all the soldiers that were supposed to, mm -hmm. and my two years were up. So actually, by the time I went back home, it was like two years and uh, maybe two weeks. Yeah. So that was actually a little more time. Mm -hmm. And then threw, threw my bag on my shoulders, came off the ship, went to the subway. You have to lay out everything that you have on the deck. And you have to show that you have no guns or you haven't got any weapons or in anything that belongs to the government. And they came along and they checked everything out. Then you put it all together and then you covered it all. You put it in a bag and put the bag on your shoulder and you went into the subway <laughs> when you went to New York. There was a funny thing and I guess this happened with a lot of other people. Being on the train, I noticed a lot of people that looked at me like, here's a soldier that's coming back. What does he want, the war? Does he cause, they blamed us. Wow. In other words, but they didn't say anything, but you could tell by their faces. They didn't care for soldiers, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. Yeah. Years later, in the last couple of years, uh, what they did was they shook your hand. Mm -hmm. They said, thank you, God bless you. You saved us something, you know, but we went through it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. our next move was to get a job. Mm -hmm. And when I came home, my sisters were there waiting. My mother was there. My father wasn't there. And I said, what happened to him? It really hit me when they said, well, he was always waiting for a letter, you know? And he thought I was in combat. You know, coming from Italy into a new country and then being drafted, they thought, they re read in the newspapers, oh watched gosh. radio, it was radio, no TV at that time. Yeah. Automatically, they saw us in the Second World War in, in their head. A poor guy was in a hospital. It took me a while to realize that I got thoroughly tied up in the army and neglected to send letters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now that I think about it, I say to myself, mm. I don't know why I didn't right, tell them yeah. about what's happening yeah. and where I am and the safety that I'm in. Yeah. Uh, the, all the things that are necessary right. without putting the war in place. Mm -hmm. And of course, he joined the, the army in the First World War. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. for, but it was almost over at the time. Mm -hmm. But he had pictures, you know, yeah. of himself. And he was a little guy, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I was dying to see him. Finally, I went to see him in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, he, he accepted me like as if it's not my fault, you know. He came home, mm -hmm. I would say about a month or two after I came back, okay. you know. What he did was, the post office, I had taken a test, passed the test, and they said, when there's an opening, we'll call you. They called, my father said, he's in the army, he just was drafted, so it's not his fault, but I will let you know as soon as I can when he comes out. And he, we're assuming it's going to be a two-year waiting period, yeah. being in the army. He did that for me, yeah. and uh, after a couple of months being home, I, I went back to my insurance company that I worked for. They said, we have to give you a job, your job back. But when I went to that department, they said to me, that department's gone. We no longer have it. It was in Manhattan. 
and it was a good insurance company. I forget the name of it, uh, and uh, my job wasn't there. So they said, "You, it, we're leaving it up to you. You have a good standing, and uh, you can pick whatever part of the uh, the job you want for the same in the same company." You know. Yeah. So I picked a pretty good job where they had automatic machines and stuff like that. Yeah. And they had different systems of taking names and, you know, if you bought insurance mm. and you wanted to uh, get involved. It was like a machine that read your whole history. When I was drafted, they knew about it, that I had to leave at a certain time. Mm. And they made a party for me. Aww. Yeah, and, and they had a table with all the soldiers, little soldiers around there and everything. I, you know, I, I, I was just ashamed. I said, what the heck? You know, I have to go on this date and leave the parents, you know? Were you scared? Uh, no, I wasn't scared, but I was... The, the fact that I was leaving, no. Yeah. One thing, I never got scared with the, with the Army. I was in good shape. In fact, there were quite a few people that are overweight. When we did long marches, this was the training, and you had that bag on your back, right. your tent rolled up, and you had your guns yeah. and everything else, and so many of them couldn't make that trip. But I already, I was in good shape. It never bothered me. Tell me about your gymnastics. Oh yeah, we used to go to Coney Island, you know, on a regular basis. We used to do a lot of swimming and stuff like that, uh -huh. and getting along. And then we used to do exercises where we did handstands, where another guy, big guy that's strong enough, yeah. and he used to hold my hands. Yeah. And I did a handstand where my legs were up and all. I missed that when I went in the Army yeah. until we were in a place where there weren't any uh, officers standing around, you know? Yeah. And I said, so this guy here, I used to do exercise with him. He was a good, strong Polish guy, yeah. but an American. Okay. And uh, I said to him, I want a picture taken of this. Yeah. I says, I got to send something home. Right. Yeah. Oh, so you took it there. So, yeah, so in, in Germany, oh. we were in a certain area, yes. uh, but we were practicing the, the war, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. We had to do this, we had to do that. We slept overnight in tents. We had to rough, uh, rough it up. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we didn't know if there was going to be trouble there. Right. Big trouble. There was enough trouble in the Korean War. But let's assume it got worse. Right. They would have to take you from Germany, no matter what, and send you over there. Yeah. From... They called it the East Zone, and Germany was the West Zone. Okay. See? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I got a bug. And as we were marching along this and that, we reached a part where we were supposed to take it easy mm -hmm. and relax. Yeah. And here I said to him, I forget his name even, but he was a pretty stocky guy. Well, he had to be to lift me up like that. Right, yeah. You know, I'm doing... I'm, I'm doing a handstand right. on his hand. You have to keep your hands a certain way yes. where they're locked in together. Right. I don't know if, if it was this. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And you take the wrist. He grabs your wrist tight. You grab his wrist. You throw yourself up to a stand, yeah. an upside-down stand. Yeah. Throw my wallet to one guy, I says, take care of that wallet, but take my picture. It looked pretty good. And I stood there and I had legs straight, but I wanted to see if I was still in shape. Right. You know? Still doing and everybody it. looked up, you know? They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to feel the walking distance, the marching, all the things that I knew I could do. You know what I mean? And, and when I looked around and saw so many guys that were overweight, mm -hmm. underweight. A lot of these soldiers were in bad shape. One of them, little fat guy, and two of us, one grabbed one arm and one grabbed the other arm. Mm -hmm. And as we marched fast, we had to pull him ahead so that he would keep up. 
his parents were from Brooklyn and they had a restaurant, but he was in that neighborhood and he got to be a friend. What was his uh, name? Do you remember his name? Oh, I, I forget. Yeah. Hey, I'm 90 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's asking a lot. That's a wee long oh, yeah. time, like, you know what I mean? Ago was that? <clears throat> yeah, no, right. Yeah. Sure. And uh, wow. I was lucky enough to live this long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And I want to just keep yeah. going. Yeah. I'm, I'm, good I'm shape, studying studying health. Yes. Yeah. You're doing a good job. <laughs> uh, of it. Yeah. That's it. And I feel good. Yeah. Feel healthy and strong. And uh, I think I think at this age I feel that I know, I'm not, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's luckily. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of luck. There's a lot of watching. There's a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep up with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I used to do a lot of walking. I couldn't stand still. In Long Island, early in the morning, I used to walk from one section to another section, a good mm -hmm. distance, and constantly do that every day. And uh, they used to say, oh, gee, you're doing a lot of walking, this and that. I said, yeah, uh, I want to keep that up. Heck yeah. Because then I noticed that breathing deep mm -hmm. helped a lot. Yeah. It kept the lungs in good shape, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, when, when we moved to Pennsylvania, I felt that I was in good enough shape and I used to take walks, extended time after time, till I did five days a week. Mm -hmm. On the weekend, of course, I didn't do all that walking. I used to see a lot of people, you know, they knew me after a while. After all, you go pass in their neighborhoods. Well, after about 10 years, I cut back to till, uh, f I would say, four miles. That's going and coming back, you know. So uh, she's, started to get a little sick and sick you know my wife and I had to take her to doctors a lot of doctors in fact just this week before my birthday we went to a heart doctor for her on Tuesday and then on Thursday she had to go because of her eye problems she was seeing less it was getting rough and uh, so that, that had to cut it back a little, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Went down to three miles okay. a day, you know? And uh, then it was almost zero, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Then I used to walk just in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, we bought the house in the condo. Uh -huh. And then uh, I took my walks around there. Yeah. So that, that, that was less than a mile even. Yeah. And of course with the age you changed. Yeah. You know. Uh, anyway, yeah. here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where are your parents from? Who? Your parents? Uh, Molly? Well, <laughs> my mother came from one city and while I was in the in Germany. We didn't have to pay for transportation. We could go anywhere, except the United States, of course. Yeah. We're in Germany. Yeah. <clears throat> a buddy of mine, we used to get along together, you know. Yeah. You, you always find a, a person that yeah, you're course. close to yeah. and you yak, and you could always yak about things. Uh, I, I said to him, Are you, uh, have you got the time? I says, I can, I want to go to, to see my relatives of my parents, you know, so I went to my mother's town. But we went from train to train to train to train. We stopped off once in a while and had an Italian sandwich or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I'd like to get, get all the names. We had to go to Paris, France parts of Italy that yeah. had nothing to do with my parents, Yeah, you know, and she came here when she was about eight years old. Eight? About eight years old, my mother. Oh, to the United States? <clears throat> to the United States. Oh, okay. And uh, she worked 
cleaning a house and stuff like that. When she got older? Uh, even though she was she was fairly young at the time, but she was a good worker, you know. So like hard. eight years old, they made her do that. Uh, yeah, they worked. Wow, she came with this parents. This was in Little Italy, yeah. Yeah. With, she came with some of her relatives, you know. Yeah. And my father came when he was about twenty-one. Okay. And uh, he came with the bigger the bigger family, you know what I mean? Yeah. His family came in. <clears throat> The uncle that came in first, which was my father's brother, Richard, he studied driving these trains, uh, subways. Yeah. So he became <coughs> an engineer yeah. uh, where he, he worked on the train. Did he have any other siblings? He had uh, two sisters mm -hmm. and he, he had, I think it was one brother so that was an additional brother that came with him, with my father. Uh, do you remember so, the sister's name? So, <clears throat> Nick, uh, Mike, uh -huh. Michael, and my father, John. Okay. That's where the John came in yeah. up till now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> What's your mom's name? Uh, Catherine. Okay. Yeah. Do you know her maiden name? So, but they met each other when, when time passed, yeah. like, you know? And this was in Little Italy. Yeah. They called it that, you know. Yeah. But it was a, it wasn't a good neighborhood. It, it was crowded. Mm -hmm. On TV, you could see sometimes where they had these wagons with fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And, and stuff like that. Yeah. So living in there, it was rough. Yeah. But there were restaurants which served the real McCoy, you know, Italian food. Yeah. And stuff like that. And Chinatown was right next to it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> when I was born, I would say a couple of months, they went from, from there to Brooklyn. Yeah. And uh, then we moved to Bay Ridge, mm -hmm. where my uncle, who was, uh, he, he drove the, the train in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, with the thing, they have this and they turn it that way, and they yeah. got brakes and stuff like that. Yep. And he says to me, <clears throat> he always said to me, he says, they couldn't understand my last name, he says, but yeah. being Italian, he says, I would have never gotten that job. Really? But he studied, well, you know how, how it is. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I get some good positions. Right. You know, uh, anyway, he says, good thing they couldn't understand that Durensis. <laughs> Yeah, that what, it, what do you think they, thought it was? They, they thought, they thought it was American, yeah. uh, something, yeah. you know, or, or else they, uh, they, 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 they never associated it with, with Italian, and I was gonna say, it definitely he, like he always the, felt that, you know, anyway, things worked out fine. He had a good job. He used to come over, and he used to always uh, bring these kisses, the chocolate like kisses? Hershey kisses, yeah, Hershey's kisses, <sighs> and in, uh, because of course it was a big family, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so he says, you're gonna get this these kisses, and what you do is you give it away to the girls, uh -oh. help the girls out, yeah. you know. So uh, I says, oh, thank you. <laughs> he used to give me a big bag full. Yeah, and they were the good chocolates, you know. <laughs> and that's when my father. Yeah, my father was uh, working for a fountain pen company, and he used to he used to bring home fountain pens, and, yeah. and he sold them oh. once in a while. Yeah, on and, the side. Yeah, he sold them. On, yeah, but they knew yeah. about it. Yeah. You know, they gave him so many, and they told him I don't know if, how much he would have given back. Yeah, you know, the money, whatever it was. Right. But uh, but they were beautiful pens, you know. Yeah. And when the Second World War came, what he did was he, they sold, they gave him a batch of Army, Navy, and Marines, which it said on the pen mm -hmm. itself. And uh, well, he used to go to one of these local bars, you know, and stuff like that. And he would have sold, he sold them. Yeah. To the people, the guy says, "Oh, I got a son in the navy. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. He says, well, they cost uh, just so much, you know. Right. And they, you could buy the ink, load it up with the ink, mm -hmm. and then you write. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, right. and those were the early pe fountain pens yeah. that came out. And he did very well over there. And uh, he had a job like that. It wasn't the greatest. It was a, something that's a uh, factory job, you know what I mean? And then he used to shine them up, you know, they, they, they used to be wonderful. Yeah. And uh, he sold them. And then he did, shoes were very expensive at the time. Yeah. And what he used to do is, he used to get shoes uh, like they were second hand or something, I don't know. Oh. He used to take me with him because I'm the only boy, and uh, they used to sell these shoes. But a lot of them would turn, it was like a garage sale, Yeah. but it was a store. Mm -hmm. And they were cheaper, much cheaper. And, and what he used to do is he used to buy big, uh, a big uh, leather, leather. The leather was about, I would say, about a half inch thick. And when he was off on the weekend, he used to get the old shoe, get rid of the uh, the the old soles. Yeah. And he used to he used to do a beautiful job. That, you know, he he had his, the special tools. I don't know if you ever saw these. He's, it's shaped like a it's, uh, uh, iron. Okay. And it's shaped like a a, a shoe. Yeah. And it goes around your knees, your legs. Okay. Like that. No, I uh, The metal was like on, on, I think it was one leg, but it, it came to a whole shoe on top. Yeah. And he had the measurement there. It was like a, a workbench. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I used to watch him, yeah. and he got that knife, and he used to draw a picture of the way it looked. Yeah. He had a, exactly the way the bottom of the shoe. And boy, the bottom, it was a brand new leather sole. Wow. This is what he did for, for us. Kids, yeah. yeah. So the top of the wow. shoe was always in great shape. Yeah. So all he had to do was remove the bottom sole right. and, and put a new one on top. Wow. See, maybe yeah. that's where you get some of that from. Oh, so he, he had a good knowledge yeah. of that. So, and, and he was good mechanically. Yeah. Wherever we moved, he was able to fix this and fix that. And, yeah. he, and I said to myself, I, I would like to be just like him, you know? Didn't you make some inventions too? Oh, yeah, well, different things. Like the cat making toothbrush thing? Oh, yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to say, Lily, brush your teeth. And she would. And she had bad, very bad teeth. Yeah. You know, Marianne sent that cat. He gave us that cat, Renata and me, and uh, you know we got to help him out, you know, yeah. help her out, and uh, and she she used to feel it, I guess. The gums used to hurt and yeah. everything else. She was in bad shape, so we brought her to the vet. The vet used to say. Uh, Oh yes, I know her. She, uh, you know, she's she's got the bad. I, I should pull those teeth out because she's, you know, they were bad. Yeah. And uh, and he pulled the teeth and all that stuff, and she felt a little better. Yeah. You know, but she's our cat. Yeah. You know, and uh, I came up with that idea. Yeah. I said, we, you know, it's hard to get a cat's head and brush it, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So what I did was I put the stick straight up and I put four toothbrushes. In fact, they were toothbrushes that we used already, yeah. you know? Kind of done. I said, oh, I'm going to keep them yeah. and, and we're not going to, we're not going to wear them out too much. Yeah. So it was like a propeller thing Yeah. and it was on a base. Yes. A wooden base that stuck yeah. stuck in there. So I had an upright and I had four corners. Yeah. And uh, uh, I used to tell her, 
put her out in the porch. Yeah. I, I couldn't, she was very sensitive, you know, I couldn't, I never let her out in the, in the open. Yeah. Except on the porch. So I had her out on the porch, she used to sit out there, but I never let her go. Because I said, she's going to get in trouble, yeah. get hit by a car or whatever it is. Well, luckily, uh, she was okay, and I used to just tell her. And she used to go, I, I used to go with the toothbrush to show her, and she understood that for some reason. I forget, I don't know if you came to the house, or Johnny and Joanne, or whatever it was, uh, I wanted to show it to them. So I had it on the floor, and she was in the kitchen, and I said, Lily, brush your teeth, show how you brush your teeth. And she went right over there, and, and she sort of rubbed her gums onto it, you know? So, of course, she started out with bad teeth. You know what I mean? Yes. Marianne said, uh, oh, I saw she was going out in the street, and she was by herself, and she was very small. And, uh, you know, that's when she brought that cat to our house. Yeah. Because Renata loved cats. I did, too. Yeah. And uh, it worked. And she, it worked. Yeah. It worked. One neighbor said, "Hey Al, if you're going to report this here, put, put me in. I'll, wow. I'll contribute. I'll, I'll give you a part of it. See, you should have done we'll, something we'll, about it, right? Yeah. Maybe. You know, you always say to yourself, if I turn it in, somebody's going to steal it. Yeah. So I really didn't follow it up that yes. much. Did you invent anything else like that? Uh, <clears throat> there was something about a window. Uh, where you get like a sort of a vibration mm -hmm. and a loosening of a window. And uh, I forgot what it was, but that's another thing. I just let it go. I never, yeah. I never followed it up. Yeah. And... Uh, when you lift the window up, it, it sort of locked itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they had different ideas with that. Yeah. But uh, being in a neighbor, bad neighborhood, you know, you, you get the idea that this should be protected. Mm -hmm. You need protection from it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> then I went into the electrical thing. And yeah. Got more complicated. However, I never trusted something new because uh, I always felt not enough confidence mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah you, you gotta you gotta have good confidence right you gotta be ready to go yeah. you gotta send it to the right people you gotta a company has to buy it invest in it and invest in it and uh, there were, there's quite a few things yeah, <clears throat> yeah. well what he did was he gave me broken clocks. <laughs> yeah. When I got the broken clocks, I used to always fool around with them and see how they function and this yeah. and that. And I got interested in that. Yeah. But uh, it was, I, yeah, I could have went way ahead. Mm -hmm. But when I got the, when they, when they said, we're automating the post office, it's gonna be automatic mm -hmm. with a lot of stuff. Yeah. They had people bring in boxes of mail, like there would be about 300 pieces of mail in a, in a box. Yeah. They had these special boxes. And they, had a, they brought it and gave it to these guys that used to box the mail according to the addresses, yeah. the towns. Okay. In other words, one guy hit this area of this town, mm -hmm. another one hit that area of the town. And they sat there and they boxed mail. and according to where it, the town is, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> this was going to be automated with uh, uh, moving, uh, via, uh, moving parts. Yeah. With, where all they had to do was put it on the belt. Okay. And push a button, and it would move along until it got to this guy. He stopped it, and the mail was right there, the whole... 300 pieces or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then he picked it up, a handful, and 
he boxed it up accordingly. Yeah. I was interested in that. When I came out of the army, they called me in, you know. Mm. And then <clears throat> I used to take radios home, these portable radios. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I, they got to, to know me. I didn't advertise it. Yeah. But the guy says, hey, my radio isn't working. I got trouble with this, you know. So I took it under my arm and uh -huh. went on the subway, went home. Yeah. and uh, fixed the radio, because the Army gave me uh, an availability so that what I could do is to, I could, correspondence courses. I says, I can't go to, uh, to, to a school because I got kids home. I would have to, you know, leave the post office and go to the school here and the school there. And it was a lot of time that took it up. So I, I took a correspondence course. Oh, okay. They gave me so much time. Yeah. And, and I, I used to travel maybe 45 minutes on a train, on a subway, and I used to take a newspaper with me. I mean, what the hell am I doing with this crazy paper? You know, it's, yeah. you know, to me, it started to look like junk. I said, I'm going to get a correspondence course and learn more, you know, yeah. about that. So when I, when I learned about it, I was able to throw away the newspaper yeah. and have the books. Okay. And the Army gave me two days for every day I was in the Army. They gave me two days of correspondence course. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I started to learn about this and about that and how, how things went. And uh, it started to absorb. And they started sending me parts of radios, TVs, oh. and stuff like that. And give me a, a book with it, yeah. how to put it together, how to solder it, yeah. how to do the electrical work and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, it, I don't think she liked the idea. No. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, you want to go someplace, you want to do this, you want to yeah. do... But I used to try to concentrate right. on the thing. Anyway, we got along and uh, uh, what happened, all of, a, all of a sudden the post office, then they had the new system mm -hmm. that was coming up. Yeah. And it was going to be automated. Okay. So I says, oh, this, this sounds good. It's right up my alley. You know, I like to study that stuff. So uh, I, I made a, a, a piece of test equipment to find out is anything wrong uh, with knowing what to do. It, it, in other words, it, it gave me the ABCs of a, a tester mm -hmm. to test the uh, radios. Yeah. So I put it together. I still have it. I still have it today. It's still working. Oh my gosh, that's cool. uh, yeah. <clears throat> the battery was inside. You had to yeah. take the whole thing apart right. and <clears throat> and uh, put a new battery in. Yeah. So I said, this, this is nuts. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I drilled two holes, mm -hmm. put two wires through there, yeah. and I put a system that you could pull the battery off the top right. and put another battery on yeah. instead of taking it apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why... I never had a, a big deal, yeah. you know, where I had to take it apart and all, yeah. and, and I'm surprised because after all these years, I got it on the workbench, yeah. and any time I want to test, I, I put these two wires together, uh -huh. see, and I feel it out, yeah. you know, and it works. Wow. So when, when, so I fixed a couple of radios and brought them back in, and, uh, I would charge the guy just for the what I put in, you yeah. know. And what happened when the when it became automated? The guys were saying to me, "Al, why don't you?" You know, as I moved up and pushed myself ahead, I said, "I got three kids, and I want to make sure that they get it." And every time I was open to a promotion, no matter how bad it was and what area of New York it was, mm -hmm. I had an income which 
would help them. I got to be interested in that mostly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Take care of your kids. Yeah. That's the main thing. As you have three kids and you want them to have the best. Right. And already one, from what I understand, <laughs> it does kicking exercises. Yes, taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, I can't, I can't say the words because these are new things that came yes, out. Yes, right, yeah. And There's when so I heard it about her, I was very proud. Yeah. She does I, dance classes too. The dance classes. Yeah. And uh, she, she does karate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. And I feel that that's amazing yeah. what it could be done. Right. There's a girl that's not going to be afraid. Right. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>